Hey guys, Chubbs here, back again with another Proteus level editing tutorial. And today I'm going to be showing you all how to go about creating Doom-like lifts. So, first of all, I'm just going to show you all this basic map that I've set up for us. We have a lift brush here, and it's just a square brush. We also have a button here at the base of the lift. And then if we go up to the, the top of the lift, you can see that it leads to this sort of small hidden room. And inside this room, we have another button, and then we have a shotgun. That way, when you ride the lift up, you can collect that shotgun and get something for riding the lift. So the goal of this tutorial is going to be really simple. I want us to make it so that both of these buttons essentially do the same thing. I want it so that when you press those buttons, this lift brush goes all the way down until it reaches this position here. And then after a few seconds, it just goes right back up to its starting position. So whenever you're working with brushes and you want to move them around, the best way to do that is to use what's called a mover. So we'll go ahead and place a mover into our map. And to do that, all you have to do is go up to Assets, click Asset Browser, and you'll probably start off right here. If you do, go to the Function category, just double click it, and then scroll down until you find the mover object. And then you can just hold down left click on it and drag it right into your map. Now, unless you're dealing with rotations, which we're not going to be, the placement of the mover is pretty irrelevant. It's, it's usually best to place it near the object you're working with. That way you can easily associate it with that object uh, for like when you come back to your map later on. But, you know, unless you're uh, doing a rotation, then the exact position is totally irrelevant. Just a heads up guys, I actually made a mistake here. I didn't realize it until after I'd finished the video, but the placement of the mover does matter if you're using sound effects because the mover is where those sound effects will originate from. So in this case, I really would have been better off placing the mover sort of inside the lift instead of off to the side a little bit. If you are going to be rotating your object though, the, uh, the mover will sort of act as like the pivot point, so that's what the rotation is going to be around. So do be aware of that. If you're going to rotate something, you're going to want to place the mover uh, wherever you want the rotation to you know, orbit around. But with that out of the way, uh, we'll just keep the mover right here, right near our lift. And in order to sort of tie a brush to a mover or associate a brush with a mover, the first thing you want to do is click and select the brush and make sure this is the only thing selected. Then pull up its properties. You can do that either by going to Windows and then Inspector, or you can just double click the brush. That's what I'll do. And then when you pull up the Property Inspector, just go up here to Select Parent. And you can see that we now have a blue line. And then just drag that line to the mover and left click. So we've now said that the mover is the parent of this brush. And so now whenever the uh, mover performs its movement commands, this brush will move. So now that we've done that, the next thing we need to establish is how far we want this brush to move down. Since we're currently using these very basic block out textures, it's actually really easy for us to determine that just by counting these squares. So we can count one, two, three, four, five, six, and that means that we would need to move this down six units if we wanted it to be, you know, flat against the floor at the end of its movement. But let's say you had some other texture that made it difficult to determine how far you needed to move. Well, another way you could go about it is you could go up here to the measure tool, click on it, and then you can start, you can sort of position your mouse where you need to start measuring from, hold down left click, and then just sort of drag down to the ground. And also, like if you hold shift, it sort of keeps it straightened out for you. But you can see that this sort of confirms that if we measure from the ceiling to the floor, that it's going to be a, a movement distance of six units. So that's another way to go about it if, you're, if you've got some other texture and you can't just count the squares like we did. So now that we've determined that we need to move this six units down, let's click on the mover and let's start to edit its properties. So the ones that we're worried about are going to be here in Movement Delta. If you need to rotate it, you can enter some values in, in Rotation Delta, but we're not going to be doing that in this tutorial. So we'll start here in Movement Delta, 
And I can never remember which of these boxes is associated with which movement direction. So I usually just type values in until I get it right. So we'll start with the first box. I'm just going to type a 6 in the first box here. And you can see it gives us a preview of the movement. And this is not what we want. This is moving like uh, out towards us. That's not how we want the lift to behave. So I'm going to change that to a zero and we're going to move to the next box and try a six there. So I'm going to type six in the next box. And this is the movement that we want. You can see this is the up and down movement. But with this current value, you can see that it's starting at its initial position and it's moving up. We don't want that. We want the lift to move down from its starting position. So instead of just plain old 6, I'm just going to make it negative 6. And now you can see that from the mover starting position, it's moving down. And that's exactly what we want. Now, if you'd like to, you can also change movement time here. And this is how long it takes the movement to uh, perform from start to finish and this is in seconds so if you want it to be like a really slow movement I could put in like 10 you can see it's that's like super slow if you wanted it to be like really fast and snappy you could do something like 0 0.25 you can see how quick that is I'm just gonna stick with the default of 1 for this lift I think that'll be just fine and finally uh, some other interesting values here you can change the audio for when the lift begins going down, you can set the audio uh, that sort of loops as it's in motion, and then you can ch uh, set which audio clip plays whenever it comes to a stop. And we'll go ahead and do that real quick. I'll show you how easy that is. So first we'll go up here to Assets, and then Audio Browser, and then you can have you can go through all different categories here. We'll double click the Elevator category, and to preview these, all you have to do is double click them. So we'll, we'll try out these Elevator 01 clips. So I think those are the ones we're going to use for our lift here. So this one is the Start clip. So with that selected, I'll just go here to Audio Clip Start, click Paste. This is the Stop clip. So with that selected, we'll click Paste under Stop. And then we'll select the loop clip and click paste here under loop. And that's how easy it is to associate those sounds with the lift. So now we have given it some sound. Now that we've given it the movement and the sound effects, let's go ahead and just tie this button to the lift and just run a quick test. We're just going to use this button here at the bottom. We're not going to work with the top button yet. But to uh, make it play that the movement or to make it activate the mover, I should say, what we'll do is we'll sort of highlight the button. We'll go here to the very first output, click it, go over to the mover, and the this bottom row of buttons, these are referred to as the inputs. So we'll tie the, the, the button's very first output to the mover's very first input. And this just tells it to, uh, whenever we press this button, play the mover. So let's go ahead and let's just test the map real quick and see what we have at this point. All right, so it might have been a little difficult to hear because the music is a little loud, but whenever we press the button, the movement was performed. It, it, the lift started at the top and then it went down to the bottom and it also played those audio clips there. And it, like I said, the music was a little loud so that might have been tough to hear, but we've made pretty good progress. We've got it so the lift goes down. Now all we need is to make it so that after a few seconds the lift goes right back up. And you might be wondering how we would go about doing that. So the way I recommend doing it is to use what's called a relay that triggers after the lift goes down at the very bottom. So we'll go ahead and we'll place the relay and then I'll talk more about the logic behind it. So to access a relay, go back up to the function category, scroll down until you find relay, drag it into your map, and I'm just going to place it near the mover. The, the placement is pretty irrelevant. And now we're going to tie these two together using logic. 
So the, the uh, mover has an output right here. You can see it's like a, a playhead with a vertical line. And this is whatever happens when the movement has, has finished, basically when it has reached the end of its animation. So what we're going to say is when it reaches the end of its animation, trigger this relay. And then what a relay does is whenever it's been triggered, it just activates some other input. So let's go ahead, let's go here to the playhead with the vertical line. So this is when, when, the, move, when the movement has finished, we're going to say activate the relay. And then we're going to tell the relay when you've been activated, which is this output that I just selected, rewind to the very beginning. That's what this sort of backwards playhead is. So we've got a pretty basic logic set up. So let's, let's cover it from the button to the mover to the relay. So the logic that we've set up is when you press the button, it plays the mover, and this makes it this makes the brush go down. And then when the when the uh, movement has finished, when it's reached the very end, it triggers this relay, which in turn tells the mover to rewind back to the beginning. And so that will make it so that when the lift has gone down and the rewind is activated, it will just rewind back up, to, back up there to the starting position. Now, one last thing we want to do is we want to determine how long we have to wait for that rewind to happen. If we, if we leave it like this, it will pretty much be instant. It will just go down and then immediately go back up, but we want there to be some sort of delay. Let's say we want it so that the lift takes three seconds to go back up to the top. So it it, we basically want it so the lift goes down, waits three seconds, and then goes up. Well, there are basically two different ways to go about doing that whenever we have like a relay set up. So the first way we could do it is we could change this right here, trigger on reaching end delay. This basically is how long it's going to wait before this uh, finished playing output is registered. So if we typed three, this would basically say, uh, whenever the movement is finished, wait three seconds and then activate this, you know, finish playing output. So that's one way we could do it. So it would wait three seconds and then it would hit the relay and the relay would tell it to rewind. Now let's change that back to a zero like we had it before and let's look at the other way to do it. So with this way, as soon as it reaches the end, since it's at zero seconds, it will immediately hit the relay. So what we could do uh, alternatively is we could click the relay itself and we could give it a delay. So we could just type three for both the maximum and the minimum delay. And this would basically say when the relay is hit, wait three seconds before doing the relays output. And that would basically have the same exact end result. So uh, I'm going to go back to the first way we did it. So let me change the relays delays back to zero. And let's go to the mover itself and just change that trigger on reaching end delay to three. So we'll just do it that way. We'll use that method. But now that we have changed that, let's go ahead and save it. And we're just going to test the button. We're not going to ride the lift up yet because we've not given this button its functionality yet. But let's just try activating this button here at the bottom. And if, if we did everything correctly, the lift should come down, wait three seconds, and then go right back up. All right, so that worked great. It was exactly what we wanted. There was something, though, at the very end that you might have noticed, and that is even after the lift had gone all the way back up, the button remained deactivated. We couldn't use it again. So that's a common problem you'll run into if you want a button that can be uh, activated over and over again. And there are a few different ways to go about fixing that. Uh, but one way to do it is we can say that when uh, we can go here to the mover and remember that I said this uh, output right here is for when the play has reached the very end. Well, we can also go here to this second one. This is when the playhead has reached the beginning, like for when you've rewound. And we can say when this thing has been rewound, 
We can click that, drag here to the button's very first input, and this the button's very first input basically says to reactivate the button. So to uh, explain that better to you guys, how the logic works, what basically happens is when you press the button, the, move, the mover plays. When the mover is finished playing, it activates the relay, which rewinds the mover. And then when the, when the mover has been fully rewound, it, this, uh, this uh, output here goes to the button's very first input, which reactivates it. So, that, so that's the part there that's important is, you know, when, when it's been fully rewound, this button will be reactivated so that you can use it again. So let's test that real quick and let's just confirm that we can reuse the button over and over again to reactivate the lift. All right, that was excellent. That's exactly what we wanted. So now that we have got everything set up, all that's really left to do is to go up to this button here and make it behave exactly the same way. Uh, so we'll go ahead, we'll just sort of tie the inputs in the same way. So we'll go here to when the button is first pressed, we'll tell it to activate the mover. We're really doing all the same stuff here. And uh, we also want to have it so that, let's see, We'll make it so that we'll, we'll do it the same way. When the mover has finished rewinding, we'll reactivate this button up top. So it's sort of the same exact setup here. There we go. So we really didn't have to make many changes. We just had to go up here to the top button, say when it's enabled, play the mover. And then when, after the, the mover has, be, has been rewound, AKA the lift has been reset to its original position, we reactivate this button so that way both buttons will you know be reactivated if they've been used so now let's test the map let's actually ride the lift up and let's try out the top button so let's let's try out both buttons and make sure that they both work correctly All right, so there you go. That worked perfect. Both of our buttons worked fine. The lift allowed us to travel up there and grab that shotgun. And that's really all there is to it. So the mover is the most important part. And then you want to associate it with a relay in order to get, you know, more advanced behavior and to allow the button to be uh, reusable and all that stuff. If you wanted to, you could also have a sort of walkover line effect by using tr uh, walkover triggers. Uh, this game doesn't have the Doom style walkover lines, but you can use triggers as a sort of substitute. But there's all kinds of things you can do with it, and I uh, really hope this tutorial has helped you guys out. So if you have a question about anything, feel free and leave a comment below. Thank you for watching, and this is Chubbs signing out.